Again, I will reiterate, I did not care about what they tried to make us care about. I don't give a f These dudes have helmets and now all of them are just having the nano and thing. They just, they don't even have, they, they don't do this anymore. You know, they don't take the helmets off. Except Dr. Fate, he got to carry this joint around. Uh, the Dr. Fate helmet, I wish it would have had a little bit of sparkle in it, like a little bit of a glow or something, you know? Like it looked it. too okay. it looked too plain, like, you know, you could set aside and they're like, you know, that's something like very intimidating. They didn't look very intimidating, you know? Um, I don't blame none of these dudes, these actors and actresses. This, the writers and directors failed them. Pierce Brosnan wasn't that bad. No, he 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 wins this category. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't that. Is. Yeah, he 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 was. It was uh, the thing is, I just didn't care about his relationship with Aldous Hodge. I didn't care about it, you know. But him as Doctor Fate, I liked. Again, I mean, you have these powerful characters like Doctor Fate and 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 somebody like Al, uh, Hawkman who have long stories i don't know how you put them all in one film and then you get uselessness from cyclone and add a smasher performance that's reminding me of peter parker man i think it was harrison ford that basically was like pointed out how stupid a lot of the dialogue is and then proceeded to demonstrate that it, if it's alec guinness and harrison ford who say the lines it just sounds good yeah chris rosner makes you know he makes chicken soup out of chicken <laughs> that the writers gave him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm serious. Like, it, his stuff just sounded better because he was saying it, even though yeah, it was yeah. kind of not a lot to it. Yeah, yeah. But I liked his look. I liked that I didn't spend one second thinking of Kent Nelson as similar to Stephen Strange, even though the characters in the comics are basically the, they're, they're written as the mirrors of each other. Mm -hmm. I, I give that a credit to Brosnan that he basically is, I'm not, you're not going to be reminded of Benedict Cumberbatch when I'm done with this. I like how yeah. fate looked. I liked his yeah, action. Yeah. I like, I think, like, yeah. and of course, fate doesn't make it out of the movie. The, the yeah. best supporting character doesn't make it. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This guy's yeah. like godlike powers and he like, he's one and done. But then yeah, I was like, well, yeah. Pierce probably didn't want to do more films. So, uh, but I like, I liked his role. You definitely could have given me 10 more minutes of him and backstory and relationship with Hawkman in particular, why we're supposed to care about them when yeah. at the end they're separated and one sacrifices himself for the other. Yeah. I mean, he's the high point for me. Quintessa Swindell and Noah Centineo are there to capture the young audience, right? They're there because they're social media sensations. People know them from Netflix shows. Like, that's why they're there. Yeah. And like, they are just there. <laughs> like, yeah. you, like, like, I felt so bad for Quintessa Swindell because like, I think she's like, she actually, I was like, I've never seen her perform. And I was like, I think she can act. I was like, she kind of reminds me of like a younger Tessa Thompson. Yes. But like, for her to basically like this is a character who's like the child in the comics is like the child of like two like red tornado like there's a whole backstory to cyclone and she yeah. gets one sentence to basically say yeah i got experimented on when i was 15 yeah i can control the wind i'm like oh, come on <laughs> I and mean, we're supposed to like want a spinoff of this character like, i felt bad for her i really did yeah. i was like this i i don't i don't think she has anything to do and like, I just don't know what she's yeah. supposed to do with these lines. Yeah. Why, why are you here again? How can you possibly help? Help those, save people from dying. Go do that. You know, that's what she's supposed to be doing. Not trying to help stop Black Adam. Because obviously what she tried to do was like, I was like, really, yo? When she tried to stop him, I was like, really? Well, but her job was to steal Michael Fassbender's attempt to stop Apocalypse. That's exactly what she did. Yeah. Right? When he started yeah. throwing all the metal in front of Apocalypse, that's what yeah. she did. Like, yeah, that was her job. <laughs> steal that scene. Um, 
Yeah, you read the Tom Holland reference. That's clearly what Adam Smasher. That was a the whole Hawkman Adam Smasher thing was a ham handed version of RDJ and Tom Holland. It was a B rate version of that. Yeah, hundred percent. That's where they got that from. And it was cheesy, and it was silly, and it was dumb. And he could be good. He could yeah. have been good. But they didn't make him good. And it's like, again, the Henry Winkler cameo. We don't care. Like, like that's supposed to make you feel this affinity for his dad. And it's like, it does. And like, even if they're going to give that to you in some Adam Smasher spinoff, you can't just... It, you can't drop that in there and assume that like now we care about yeah. him trying to live up to his dad's image. Like, yeah, yeah. We don't care. We don't care at all. Brian. I will say, yeah. So can I just talk about Aldous Hodge for a second? Okay. So you I was gonna he, talk about him too. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. He he's getting he's being viewed as one of the better parts of this movie. I don't know how, but go ahead. I think he's horrible and like maybe it's because i maybe it's because i think carter hall is like a really rich text i think the idea of this character who's died and lived thousands of lives and yet retains that connectivity between those lifetimes i think it's just sort of interesting to me there's kind of like a there's like a highlander element there's like a um sort of supernatural element Boy, like his vast lifetime he doesn't display a uniqueness about his character it's not at all there's there's no hint of his immense knowledge and things he's been through things he's seen hell he he probably was around when ancient kandak was going through its thing like all these possibilities they could have drawn to make that character interesting. And instead, they kind of make him out to be like, he's kind of like a, I don't know, he's like a policeman. Like, I don't know what, like, he just, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's kind of just like, oh, I'm just there to put this guy behind bars. Like, I... yeah. And then I felt bad for him, though. I felt bad for all this because it's like, you know, it's like all this was. All this was the jobber, man. Like, how many fights was he in in this movie? What was his record? Three? <laughs> I don't know. So he I got probably... his ass kicked in this movie. Yeah. Black Adam beat him all over Panda. And then, other than the one trick he sort of pulled on Sabak, he got absolutely trounced by the villain too i'm like yeah. i was like come on man like hawkman's gotta have something better than that to, to work right. with when he started running up the stairs i said out loud oh my god it's not like his wings he was incapacitated y'all <laughs> He ran upstairs and it took him a minute because there was a scene before he got there. This is the ridiculousness that some of you put up, put up with. Again, if you liked it, hooray for you, but. So like, yeah, it's like all this Hodge has charisma, but He's miscast, I feel like, in this role because there's no car signs of Carter. There's no signs of Carter Hall. There's no signs of an authentic Carter Hall in here. And we're not given any reason to invest in Carter Hall's story, even if, again, I'm sure we're supposed to get a spinoff about this. And I was, and this was, this was what I was afraid of of him playing the character. And, and, and I already caught a hint of it in, in an article. But he said, well, they let us, you know, you know, play the character and, and be one. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't any direction on what they wanted these characters to be, Brian. They just said, go with it. Yeah. And it, like I said, it's weird because with Carter Hall's sort of almost immortality and his historical knowledge, there was like the most obvious way for him to connect 
with Teth Adam in a way that no one else probably could. And yet he was the character that basically was like, surrender, come with us if you want to live. Like he was the most obtuse of all the characters with regard to Black Adam. Water Hall wouldn't be that. Like that just wouldn't be his approach, like yeah. at all. I just don't buy it. So like, yeah. I just, I can't, it's weird. Like I, I, I don't hate Hodge as an actor, but I hated right. the performance. I was angered yeah. by it in the theater of what I was seeing. It was exactly I didn't hate I, it as much wow. as something else. Do you want to just take the stage and talk about what was literally the worst? Oh, man. Just go for it. It's one of the most atrocious choices and characters they've put on a comic book screen in a long time. So just go for it. Listen, this performance, this kid, something needed to happen to him. I don't know, a, a, a toe, something. He knocked out something but nothing happened to this dude not even when he was all crumped up in the bicycle and the the bicycle was getting thrown side to side he didn't have no backache no nothing <laughs> wow this is the sort of things that people put up with because and when i talked to freddie and even even like like with dr strange with thunder and thunder he says it's just a comic book movie. That's what I'm afraid of, Brian. When you start classifying these films, oh, it's just a comic book movie. No, it's not just a comic book movie. But you treat it like that, and people are supposed to accept it, and this is the result of it. Garbage. I'm sorry, it's garbage. I mean, this, I mean, so it's Bodhi Sem, Sembangui, uh, a newcomer. So I, I, you know, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to end his career before it begins, <laughs> but this character, there's a reason you saw no trace of this character in any of the promotional material. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've seen this genre make in a long time. To, look, we knew from the second he came on screen, Amon, that Amon, that he was going to be the proxy for the child from ancient Kandak for his son. But we didn't need him to be the inspirational leader of the rebellion of the entire people. When that happened, after everything else that had happened, when that dude jumped up and made the symbol, and that's what galvanized the rebellion. Listen, I Yo. It was a horrible character, and he wasn't good. Every time he was on screen, I was like, oh, um, yo, I was like, I couldn't, I, I think he was uh, one of the other reasons I wanted just to get out. He, that kid was just horrible. Don't forget your catchphrase. Oh, my God. Really, yo? That doesn't make you cringe? You didn't cringe? Oh, as I said, I was having echoes of the worst parts of Last Action Hero. Because that's like, it wasn't John Connor that I was being reminded of. It was the kid from Last Action Hero who was super annoying in that movie. <laughs> you know, but he's trying, in that movie, at least he's like meta, right? He's trying yeah. to like play up all these tropes. Like yeah. this kid was supposed to be like this really serious character. And then like, you know, the mom is basically using like, using him to like get black Adam to be your henchman. And like, I'm with you. I'm like, you'll let this kid go. Like let Sabak do whatever the hell he wants to him. Like we don't need this guy. Like why are we moving heaven and earth to save him? This ain't no chosen one. Exactly. <laughs> and the woman at some point, I just completely lost interest. Because she could have played a big role. She could have been the one talking to Black Adam. And, and the actress and, wasn't bad. Sarah Shai. Yeah. Sarah Shai. She, she actually is pretty good. And then you just realize she she's just written into a corner. Yeah. Exactly. She could have been the... I mean, in the future, her character, they become he becomes her love interest, right? Yeah. But like, you don't... But that's the thing is like, 
we're dropped into her world and like she's an archaeologist freedom fighter which is that's a little tough to pull off right away but like we're given no context for her quest for the crown of sabak we don't really like this, the motivation and stakes don't really make a lot of sense because you don't have like, well, what is she, you know, where's the years of research? Where's the years of clandestine operations she's been doing to try to liberate? We don't have any of that. Mm. But then they give her the big speech on the jet where she makes them all work together. And that's when I cringe because I was <laughs> like, I mean, you got Teth Adam, Dr. Fate, Hawkman. I mean, that's, I mean, between the three of them, what is that like 12,000 years of like experience, basically? <laughs> and like this woman is the one playing referee and telling them to like snap into line and be, be good to me. Like, I just, it, not Dr. Yeah, Fate. It's cliche, it, but it's the wrong character at the wrong time delivering the wrong message and it doesn't work. I felt, again, I felt bad for her because I think she could be a good character, a good, performer yeah but yeah Brian, did you cringe when everybody was going after these uh these 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 i guess these dead people with 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 sticks and 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 the celebration at the end (laughs) yo if you can't tell that these people are being paid to be there I don't know what to tell you. Well, I did. Okay. But if we're talking about plot holes here, I. So we are supposed to believe that for 27 years, both the Justice League and the Justice Society has turned a blind eye to basically an entire region being subjugated by, you know, effectively stereotypical white colonials. I mean, I think, and like, not only that, but like Intergang has some tricked out technology, like these Eternium powered vehicles that basically can fly as fast as Black Adam can, which is in that one chase scene. I mean, I don't know. Consider me a little skeptical that like Watchtower would just be like, now we're good. We don't have to pay attention to the sand. Like there's nothing happening. Like, Like either they're, Either they're racist heroes or <laughs> like incompetent heroes, or I don't know what, but like when she gives that thing about like for 27 years you didn't do anything, now you show up because this guy's here. I'm like, again, bad writing doesn't make sense. You're trying to world build. That's a pretty big black mark on the eye of all the heroes that like they've turned a blind eye to this. Yeah. And then, yeah, like. The point, like the zombie thing was just funny to me because at that point I was like, Sabak had come had come out and looked like video game Hellboy gone wrong. <laughs> I was like, the only thing we didn't have were these like, you know, the CGI skeletons from like Clash of the Titans back in the day. And I was like, oh there they are. God. They're coming. <laughs> like, here they are. <laughs> I'm cute. Hit the music. Oh my God. Oh. Man. And that celebration towards the end got me like, oh my God, I can't believe this. <laughs> I can't believe this. Oh my God. Well, anyway, supporting Cass Bryan was, didn't, I, I didn't, again, didn't do anything for me. It didn't make me care about the, what they what they wanted me to care about. Um, some of the performances are good because some of them people, are, some of these people are just good performers. Pierce Brosnan, yeah. Um, yeah. but Aldous Hodge and all these, you can just tell that these other actors required a different performance that they weren't given any direction. They were just told to go with it. And we got what we got, man. And I don't know. Yeah. So to me, Brosnan is the top. The kid is the bottom. I don't yeah. think that I think I think if you don't have that opinion leaving this film, I'm like, I don't know what movie you saw. Uh, the only thing that mildly intrigued me was the um, uh, the producers, both Flynn and Hiram Garcia. You know, we talked about the editing of this movie, what it didn't have, what it had too much of. They did say the thing that got cut the most was JSA scenes. 
in favor of servicing more action. I'm not, given the writing, I, I don't necessarily think those would have been great scenes, but I would have liked to have seen it because I feel like this movie would have, anything more with, you know, Kent Nelson and Carter Hall's relationship would have improved that aspect of the movie and taking out a little of the action, I think would have helped the movie. So, you know, if they ever do, I mean, not that I would ever root for an extended cut of this, but if they ever do one on HBO or on HBO Max, that's the one piece I'm at least like slightly interested in. Seeing. I'm scared because they thought what they put out there was good. Yeah, I <laughs> True. Imagine what they didn't put there. Like, oh no, they can't put this. Um, <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, that was category number four supporting cast. 